beautifully situated on the Adriatic Sea, Split is known for its charming old town palace, beaches, close proximity to some amazing national parks and a fortress. So in this video, we'll show you some of the top things to do in Split. How to use public transportation to get to some amazing sites outside of the city and a must-try dish that was by far the best meal we had in Croatia. Now we're Kendra and David of Lucas World Travel, two Americans who sold everything to travel the globe, hoping to find our forever home in the process. If you're an OG subscriber, then you know we've wandered from Bali to Slovenia. And although we haven't been everywhere yet, it's on our list. So we invite you to subscribe for travel adventures that will be sure to inspire your own. <music> to get to Split, we took a 12 hour, yes, 12 hour bus ride from Roe V to Split. It was our longest bus ride yet, but a beautiful one. So after a very long 12 hour journey from Rovi, we're finally in Split, Croatia. It's just an 11 minute walk to our Airbnb and we can't wait to check in. in this one bedroom apartment for seven days enjoying Split. Let's see how it goes. Now Split's old town is unique because the entire town used to be the palace of one man, the retired Roman Emperor Diocletian. Well, welcome to Diocletian's palace. This palace was made in the third century AD. It was for the Roman Emperor Diocletian, and he built this to be his retirement home after he was done ruling the Roman Empire. So this particular entrance was the main entrance. It was called the Golden Gate, and the little coves you see there used to hold statues of the former Roman emperors. It's a very cool gate, Outside this gate is a huge statue of Bishop Gregory of Nen, who rebelled against the Pope by using Croatian language to deliver religious services instead of Latin. And his statue sits so picturesquely on this hill with the church steeple, you have to come out to see this one. But the inside is even better, so let's go check it out. Next stop is the Split Cathedral Complex. This complex used to be Diocletian's main living quarters and mausoleum. Now it's converted into the city's cathedral. We bought the Purple Pass for 80 kuna, which includes access to all five sites of the cathedral complex. We started with the treasury, which houses all the sparkly treasures of the cathedral. Next stop is the cathedral, which is probably the smallest cathedral that I've ever been inside. And that's because it was built originally as a mausoleum for Diocletian instead of a church. This is quite ironic because Diocletian was a well-known persecutor of Christians and now his mausoleum is a place of worship for them. Oh, how times change. Next was a climb up the cathedral's bell tower. It's loud! <laughs> Look at how narrow this staircase is. This is how I would imagine the climb in the Pyramid of Giza would be. The stairs may be narrow, but the view is beautiful and will be a real highlight of your trip to Split. Oh. 
one of the things I noticed that I found odd, and I asked Kendra, why would a why would an Egyptian sphinx be here? Um, Egyptian sphinx date back 3,000 years ago. So why would it be here in um, in Croatia? Well, it turns out the Diocletian emperor had 12 of those sent here. And they come with a specific myth that if you pass the Sphinx and you look him in the eye, he proposes a riddle to you. And if you get the answer wrong, you're gonna die. So if you believe in that, you shouldn't look him in the eye. People who actually believe that avoid looking a Sphinx in the eye. So on that somewhat creepy note, we're gonna head down to the crypt. which honors St. Lucy. It was a bit dark and dreary in there though, so we quickly came out to see the fifth and final stop, the Baptistry, also known as the Temple of Jupiter. This chamber is small but beautiful with sculptures and a beautifully ornate ceiling. This palace and cathedral complex is a real wonder and an absolute must-see when you come to Split. Next, you can do some souvenir shopping in Diocletian's cellar. This place is also great for simply admiring the substructure of this palace. Once you come out of the cellar, you will be on the Riva Promenade. So this is Riva, a great walking street to get a drink or to get a bite to eat. So let's find some lunch. So we got this very juicy looking veggie burger and fries. And eating with this view, not a bad thing to do. This is also where you can book a variety of boat tours, which we highly recommend. Riva is perfect for relaxing and taking in some beautiful sea views. And at the end of the promenade is Republic Square. So this Republic Square was built relatively recently. In the 1880s, the mayor decided to commission this to be made. He wanted to build it in the style of St. Mark's in Venice. It's mostly used for restaurants, cafes, and also concerts. Walking back through the old town, we find Diocletian's clock tower. Built in the fourth century, this unique 24-hour clock is filled with Roman numerals and a lot of charm. After a beautiful day of exploring the city, we decided to try one of the specialities of this region of Croatia. And it wound up being our favorite meal in Croatia. So this is called what again? Pastisada. Pastisada. Yes. Mm. And a salad and muscle pasta. Now this beef pastisada seriously might be one of the best things I've ever eaten. Mm. Now this, this sauce. <laughs> It's so sweet and flavorful. My word, it's worth it. It's a marinated beef, marinated in red wine for days. It is super unique. Highly recommend this one. And the gnocchi. It's just regular gnocchi, but it's good. This is very tasty. It's very garlicky, like I think. The clams are seasoned with garlic, and because of that, it's infused in these noodles. Now these noodles are homemade noodles, so they're really rich. Like they're, they have a texture to them, and then they don't taste like something you make out of the store. It, it, it tastes homemade. So as you can see, that was delicious. We love this vinegar. Two thumbs up. Highly recommend. <laughs> I was blown away by this beef pastisada, so definitely give it a try when you're in Split. So now we're going to take you to one of the most iconic fortresses in Croatia, Klis Fortress. To get there, we took the number 22 bus from the HNK bus stop. 
It costs 13 kuna, and the Kliss Fortress is the final stop. Now they used this fortress to film Game of Thrones when they went to Marine. Let's show you around. Now don't be deceived, a lot of the walls of the fortress are like this, rubble. <laughs> so on Game of Thrones, they did a lot of CGI enhancement of the fortress. So don't expect to see the exact same thing as you did on the show, but it is super cool here. Lots of great views. Also, they have a display on how it looked when they shot the show here. That's a lot of extras. So look at what CGI can do. This is the real fortress. See how rocky the city walls are? But with CGI, they turned it to look all smooth and finished and polished. They also have two model dragons. But the real highlight of this fortress is the amazing views. Troublemaker that David is. This is the type of trouble he gets in when we travel. <laughs> Medieval punishment. <laughs> Let me out. So Kendra's in trouble, so she's going to confess her crimes now. I did it. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but okay. <laughs> they did eventually catch the both of us, though. I really enjoyed visiting this place. It's quite phenomenal. We enjoyed the fortress so much, we wound up missing our bus. So, if you see, we missed the 2.30 bus, so we had to wait an hour and a half to get the 4 o'clock bus. So, as you can see, the bus doesn't come that often. We patiently waited, and the 4 o'clock bus showed up right on time. Once we got back into town, we decided to take a sunset walk on the beach. Batsvicha Beach is just a 15 minute walk from Old Town. So we're here in early October and the water is quite choppy. I'm sure the water is calm and serene in the summer months, but this is what you get in October. Nonetheless, this is a beautifully scenic walk. And quite lively too with bars and restaurants playing dance music as you walk by. <laughs> as you walk the coastline in the evening, you'll see amazing scenic views and a beautiful sunset. So we'd say, a walk to Verviche Beach is good in all seasons. The next day we took a bus one hour north to Skradin to go to Kraken National Park. You can use the website getbybus.com to get the current schedule to Skradin and Kreka National Park. So we're walking through Skradin now on our way to the Kreka National Park. And one tip I have for you is to make sure you buy your return bus ticket before you head to the park. Um, the guy was telling us that the buses fill up and there's only two that goes back. Um, in this off season, one at 6.10 and one at 7.45. And if your preferred time fills up and you have to wait an hour and a half, you can imagine how upset you would be. So <laughs> go ahead, take the time, buy your ticket before you go to the park. Tickets to the park were 100 kuna and included a boat ride into the park.
As you can see, Frika National Park starts off with a bang with this gorgeous, huge waterfall. Now this waterfall is called Shredinsky Oak, and this alone makes Frika National Park worth coming to see. start to see the leaves change. Nice cool day around 60 degrees. So Krika National Park is the second most popular national park in Croatia, right after Plitvica. And I can see why. It really does remind me of Plitvica a lot. So this park is filled with winding dirt trails and lovely wooden boardwalks that will guide you all throughout the park. This trail is a very short and easy 1.2 miles long, but it does take about two hours to get through because all of the stops you will make at the lovely viewpoints. So it's lovely to walk through here, listen to the falls, and just take in all this beautiful nature. First of all, I love waterfalls, so I'm just totally loving this place. I think it's beautiful. I love the way they design it. They make it where you can actually walk over the waterfall so you like you feel like you're right in the middle of it and i think it's really really beautiful that way you kind of feel like um you're in tune with the nature around you the fish that are underneath you and everything so i just really love it so this side of the park just has spartanski waterfall but if you drive to different entrances you can see different waterfalls and take different hiking trails we don't have a car, so we will not be able to explore those this time, but we are very pleased with what we saw and highly recommend Fika National Park. Split really does offer a good mix of lively atmosphere, interesting history, and beautiful nature, and should definitely be on every world traveler's Croatia itinerary. Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell to see our next adventure to the lovely island of Havar. Another beautiful stop on our journey to a hundred countries. We thank you so much for watching and joining our community of supportive world travelers and wish you the very best on your journey. Braviche. Braviche. Braviche is always good every season. No, 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 no. What'd you say? What'd you say? Yeah, that works. <laughs>